She doesn't have a plan. She copied Biden's plan. She is Biden. You know, she's trying to get away from Biden. I don't know the gentleman. She says, she is Biden. So she just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. Why hasn't she done it? <laughs> you talk about extreme. <laughs> One of the biggest challenges facing Kamala Harris in her first and likely only presidential debate against opponent Donald Trump was how she would distance herself from the Biden administration. Months after her Democratic predecessor's disastrous performance, Harris appeared calm, articulate, while baiting Trump with tactics of her own during the 90-minute debate. Let's talk about what Donald Trump left us. Kamala Harris didn't really effectively distance herself from Biden. She just didn't talk about the record. It was, if she, it was as if she'd been holidaying in um, Tahiti or something for the last three years and had decided to come in and rescue America from the awful mess that it's, uh, uh, that it's in. So she's simultaneously saying, America is in a terrible mess, which I will fix. And at the same time, when she does talk about the Biden record, she says it's a fabulous record. Look at all the wonderful things we've done. But neither the moderators nor Trump, it must be said, really tagged her sufficiently, either with the Biden uh, legacy or with the legacy of her own wing, uh, left wing policies in the past. Trump neglected to tie Harris to Biden for over the first hour of the debate, with his rival issuing a stern reminder following the first commercial break. It's important to remind the former president, you're not running against Joe Biden, you're running against me questions regarding the vice president's record in office were often dodged completely as abc's david muir asked specifically if she shoulders any of the blame for the messy u.s withdrawal from afghanistan in the summer of 2021 well i will tell you i agreed with president biden's decision to pull out of afghanistan four presidents said they would, and Joe Biden did. There is not one member of the United States military who is in active duty in a combat zone in any war zone around the world the first time this century. So how did Harris distance herself? Here's a look at how they tackled major topics of the debate. We finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right, he did beat Medicaid, he beat it to death. What the Affordable Care Act has done is eliminate the ability of insurance companies to deny people with pre-existing conditions. I don't have to tell the people watching tonight, you remember what that was like? Remember when an insurance company could deny if a child had asthma, if someone was a breast cancer survivor, if a, if a grandparent had diabetes? And thankfully, as I've been vice president and we over the last four years have strengthened the Affordable Care Act, we have allowed for the first time Medicare to negotiate drug prices on behalf of you, the American people. You got to take a look at what I was left when I became president and what Mr. Trump left me. We had an economy that was in free fall. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15 percent. It was terrible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce back jobs, a bounce back from the COVID. I am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up the middle class and working people of America. That is why I imagine and have actually a plan to build what I call an opportunity economy. Donald Trump has no plan for you. And when you look at his economic plan, it's all about tax breaks for the richest people. The idea that the politicians they, they, that the founders wanted the politicians to be the ones making decisions about women's health is ridiculous. That's the last, no politician should be making that decision. One does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government, and Donald Trump certainly, should not be telling a woman what to do with her body. Number one, everyone from the United Nations Security Council straight through to the G7, to the Israelis and Netanyahu himself have endorsed the plan I put forward, endorsed the plan I put forward, which has three stages to it. The first stage is trade the hostages for a ceasefire. Second phase is a ceasefire with additional conditions. The third phase is no, the end of the war. The only one who wants the war to continue is Hamas. I said then, I say now. Israel has a right to defend itself. We would. And how it does so matters, because it is also true, far too many 
Innocent Palestinians have been killed. But the one thing I will assure you always, I will always give Israel the ability to defend itself, in particular as it relates to, as it relates to Iran and any threat that Iran and its proxies pose to Israel. But we must have a two-state solution where we can rebuild Gaza, where the Palestinians have security, self-determination, and the dignity they so rightly deserve. I think uh, Trump would have been much more effective to refer to Kamala Harris as Biden-Harris, uh, instead of which he said, you know, she's a Marxist and so on. Well, that's, that's plainly, uh, plainly over the top. I think Trump was effective in saying how bad Biden's record was. Kamala Harris just kind of ignored it, really. I guess most of the people who want her to win won't, won't tag her with all the, uh, all, all the difficulties and disappointments of the Biden record. By the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. I'm going to tell you all in this debate tonight, you're going to hear from the same old tired playbook a bunch of lies, grievances, and name calling. I'm going to actually do something really unusual, and I'm going to invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies, because it's a really interesting thing to watch. The worst president, the worst vice president in the history of our country.